Hello everyone, this is the most magnificent bird, Buckbeak, speaking to you today. And in today's video, I'm back at it with another character review, and this character review will be on Gold Mythic Rick Grimes. Now, I believe in all of RTS, I believe this is like the 1,000th version of Rick Grimes in the game. No, there's not that many, but I mean, Rick Grimes, there is a lot of Rick in RTS. I mean, there's a lot of different variations of the character, and this is just another addition to that character, and this is the more, uh, this is mostly the look that people that have read the comics, you know. This is a later part of the comics. I'm not sure exactly when this Rick is supposed to be at in the comics. This is definitely after the governor chopped his hand off because, you know, he's only got one hand here. And while they didn't do that to him in the show, there is another character from the show that they gave that treatment to a character named Aaron which in the later seasons they made Aaron look a lot like Rick right here I mean particularly this version of Rick they really made him look pretty similar to Rick and they, they did that on purpose and while he doesn't lose his hand the same way they figured they would give him the missing hand, missing arm uh, look as well. And you know what? For what they did with Aaron, I quite enjoyed it. I mean, it would have been better if Rick would have made it. I mean, if he would have been in the show all the way through. But for what we got in the show, it was great, honestly. And speaking of The Walking Dead... I watched Daryl Dixon, yes, the Daryl Dixon spinoff, and all I'll say is I'll share my thoughts, I'll do a quick free, uh, a quick spoiler free review, I'm gonna watch it again before I go into heavy spoilers, but I really enjoyed it, but we'll get into that afterward, and there's kinda something else I wanna get into as well, but... I hope all of you are doing good and staying safe out there. I'm doing good now, and I'm staying safe for the most part, and I don't think we should waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump into this character review, shall we? Rick Grimes, Alexandria. His trait is fast. His role is support. And his allegiance is a member of Alexandria. Now let's take a look at his stats. His attack stat is 24,222. His defense 17,301. And his HP 16,147. Now let's take a look at his adrenaline rush. Hatchet job. Recharge rate is 66 AP. Deal 400% damage to a line of enemies plus 300% damage if the target has 50% or more HP. If the target has less than 50% HP, Two other teammates get 100% attack for one turn. Hmm. You know, I don't know. This is kind of making me question, should Rick Grimes really be a promo tune? I mean, there's other parts of his kit that maybe make that so, but right at the, right at the start, this just seems like... Like, as if you were giving this character out, he's got the adrenaline rush to the equivalent of a free-to-play event tune. I don't know. Like, I mean, I guess it's okay, but, 
I mean, it's not bad, but it definitely could have been better. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that. 400% damage to a line of enemies. I mean, plus 300% if the target has 50% or more HP. Hmm. I'm not sure. Plus, if the target has less than 50% HP, two other teammates get 100% attack. The 100% attack is, it's good. I mean, it's nice, but it's only for the one turn. I don't know. I'm kind of mixed on his adrenaline rush. I don't know. Like I said, I mean, it could have been better, but it could have been worse. But it feels like his adrenaline rush you know, based off of that, he shouldn't be a promo. But I'm, you know, we'll we'll get into his kit. You know, we're gonna move on here shortly. But as far as his adrenaline rush, I, I'm mixed on it. Honestly, we'll see. Maybe it could be better. Maybe somebody could make real, you know, could take real advantage of it and make it really good. But I mean, I don't know. Right now, I'm mixed on the adrenaline rush overall now let's take a look at his signature move exposing lunge the initial cooldown is turn one and the number of cooldowns is two turns and number of uses unlimited remove camouflage from an enemy if that enemy is a trait other than strong trait a damage roll teammate gets 100% attack for two turns deal 500% damage to a single enemy plus 500% damage to strong trait enemies okay now now I'm trying now I'm starting to see where okay maybe he I can see where he might be worth it to be a promo because he's removing camouflage from an enemy and you know but here's the thing that enemy has to be strong not strong that enemy has to be alert fast or tough because for whatever reason the camouflage isn't getting removed from strong trait enemies I don't know I find that a little weird but now I'm seeing where like okay I can see why he might be a promo now because removing camouflage from an enemy that's gonna be really good that's gonna be very nice absolutely plus a damage roll teammate gets a hundred percent attack for two turns deal 500 percent damage to a single enemy plus 500 percent damage to strong trait enemies i'm actually really liking the signature move a whole lot more than the adrenaline rush so sometimes you know signature moves can actually be better than adrenaline rushes and again i think this is a case where the signature move is actually way better in my opinion the Adrenaline Rush is okay, but the Signature Move, I really like the Signature Move 100%. Now let's take a look at his Mythic Abilities. Cunning, when attacking or being attacked, 30% less likely to trigger enemy weapon effects and walker effects. Not really going to spend a whole lot of time on this one. Go ahead and level that one up if you can, for sure. Shocking result. When an enemy is revived, 100% chance a random enemy gets normalized for two turns. This one's interesting. Absolutely. Even though Rick's attacks, uh, attack stat is high, he is a support tune. And I can definitely see where that support is coming in at. As far as the camouflage and normalize, I can see why he's a support tune. Although, I mean, they could have made him a damage dealer, but 
I don't know. Maybe they made the right call making him a support tune based off the camouflage and uh, normalize. So, shocking result. I think I would definitely level that one up. For sure, that seems like a really good one. Lessons learned. When an enemy has camouflage removed, 100% chance one other teammate recovers from all penalties and gets camouflage and focus for two turns. Okay, yeah, I definitely see more and more of the support role this character is getting. Lessons learned, whenever an enemy gets camouflage removed, there's going to be a 100% chance that a teammate will recover from any penalties against them and also get that camouflage and focus for two turns. That's going to be really good. I feel like Lessons Learned is going to be a really great one to level up, so I will definitely level that one up for sure. Uncovered and smithed? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but whatever. At the start of each turn, 100% chance a random enemy gets camouflage removed and a random enemy gets bonus HP block for one turn plus one duration for each fast trait teammate. Now, this one uncovered, um, I mean, I don't think it's bad, but I think lessons learned and shocking result. I think those two are just a little bit better. But I could see where this might be worth it. Maybe based off his leader skill. Because I notice he has a leader skill. Which we will get to momentarily. So yeah. At the start of each turn. You know. 100% chance a random enemy gets camouflage removed. And then a random enemy... Also gets bonus HP block for one turn, plus one duration for each fast trait teammate. So, potentially, you know, that could be pretty good. But, like, you know, his main thing is removing camouflage and normalize. That's definitely his main thing, for sure. And I would say probably cunning... Shocking result and lessons learned are absolutely the top priority, but maybe I'll come back to Uncovered once we get to his leader skill, which we will get to right now. All fast and tough teammates get 45% attack at the start of each wave. A random enemy gets normalized for three turns. So there you go. He is going to support fast and tough attacking tunes. So that's going to be... I mean, it doesn't say specifically damage roll characters, but those two traits are going to get that 45% attack. So perhaps Uncovered might be worth leveling up for sure, but I highly doubt I'm going to pull this character, but for those that might pull for this character I think it might be worth it to level up all of his mythic abilities to get the most out of Rick Grimes for sure the 45% attack for all fast and tough teammates not bad at all really good the, because you know there are some combinations that you could make with Rick Grimes you know Rick Hen Jing Raven uh Lydia let's see who else um Maybe Lily from Season 1 Telltale. Um, I know there's other tunes that I'm not thinking of that I'm missing, but there are some decent choices within those two traits that you could make a really good team out of if you wanted to mix it up with the leader. So, yeah, I like the leader skill. Plus, a random enemy is getting normalized for three turns. You know how, you know how annoying that's going to be to deal with? But, you know how good that's going to be if you're coming up against it. And depending on the enemy that gets the normalize, that could be really awesome, for sure. Now, let's take a look at his weapon. 
as you can see he has a default weapon so you could put you can pretty much put whatever you want into his hands although it's a little bit of a missed opportunity they should have used his um not his hatchet but his um his hand knife or whatever or whatever you call it where he's missing his hand that should have been his fast weapon missed opportunity but you can still put whatever you want and I'm sure maybe some of you or all of you have something that you could fit that could fit right into his hand so yeah I really like the look on him he's got a relatively simple look but did he ever have a red scarf I don't think I don't remember he may have at Alexandria maybe at the prison too but um I don't know but yeah I don't know if I'm gonna I doubt I'm gonna pull for him I highly doubt it because I don't I don't know I kind of like the leader I have now gold mythic Jackie really has been a lifesaver for me so I highly doubt unless they come out with another tune that has burn and bleed resistance on their leader skill I highly doubt I'm gonna be changing that leader anytime soon or if ever in the gold mythic era so but yeah he does seem pretty interesting I'm kinda of mixed on his adrenaline rush but there are other parts of his kit that are very good so yeah I'm pretty much done with this calendar review, but um, real quick, I just wanted to talk about two things. If y'all don't want to hear about any of this, you can go ahead and click off the video, and I do thank each and every one of you for watching. I'm not really going to get into spoilers, but let me talk The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon spinoff. Just a quick spoiler-free review. I gotta say, uh, I really enjoyed the, that first episode. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that first episode, and um, I thought it was really good. And I gotta say this, I don't know if this is kind of a hot take, but I gotta say I enjoyed this season premiere episode of Daryl Dixon more so than I did the Dead City season premiere. This episode gives you a little bit of everything from, like, the world building, you know, to action. I mean, I'm not going to go into specifics, but, yeah, there's definitely some action in there. There's definitely getting to know certain characters, and there's a character named Isabel that I'm, you know, I'm more, you know, I'm very intrigued to learn more about her. And I believe the same. I believe the same actress that plays Isabel played in the later Harry Potter movies as Fleur Delacour. If I'm not mistaken, it, it looks exactly like her, which is crazy. If it's the same actress, I believe so. But yeah, Daryl got to do some cool shit. You know, just some. Like I said, I don't want to really get into spoilers. I'll definitely watch the episode again to see, you know, to see if I didn't miss anything, but I'm kind of liking where it's hitting, and yeah, maybe some people won't like it, maybe people won't like, maybe they won't like it as much as Dead City, I don't know, but I'm a little bit more, maybe not biased, if you want to call me a Daryl Dixon simp, you may, but I gotta say, I might like this better than Dead City. Maybe. There's some interesting stuff here. Just in this one episode. And I'll definitely... I'm gonna watch it again. And I'll definitely... I'll definitely watch it again. Before I get into spoilers. Now. The other thing I wanted to talk about... Ugh, I kind of briefly wanted to talk about it. Uh, Man... That Patriots Eagles game, it just it. Mm. I'm not gonna talk about this briefly, but man, what a load of what a load of bullshit! Like, I mean, seriously, like 
I strongly feel like New England should have won that game. Like, there were definitely at least two or three different opportunities for us to take the lead over Philadelphia, but, but no, 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 no. Those white and black zebras known as the referees, you know, either they're going to let shit go by them or they're just going to flip out them yellow flags to screw us over. So there's definitely, there was definitely two or three opportunities where we could have won the game, but no, 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 they had to help Philly out. But you know what? I just got to say, even though I'm just, ooh, I think I'm done with the season already, and it's only week one, just because more of that bullshit is going to continue, it just, it, it's crazy. Does that mean I'm going to stop the NFL Madden videos? Oh, no, absolutely not. I'm still going to continue them. In fact, I want to do the Pro Bowl this week. I'm still planning on doing that, and then after the Pro Bowl... We're going to do week one of the 2023 season where the New England Patriots are going to be playing the Carolina Panthers. Not in real life, but in NFL Madden. So yeah, the NFL Madden videos are still coming, but as far as like real life NFL football, you know, I would... I wouldn't be shocked if I didn't talk about it again as far as real life football. Um, you know what? I just want to say I wish the best of luck to my Patriots, the 49ers, the Bengals, Pittsburgh. You know, I hope they do all right. But other than those teams, all the rest of the teams can go suck eggs. You know what? No, no, no. I want to wish the Patriots, the 49ers, the Bengals, the Steelers, and the Lions luck. Other than those five teams, all the rest of the teams can go suck eggs for all I give a damn. So, sorry for that little rant, but yeah, uh, watching the Daryl Dixon spinoff put me in a little bit of a better mood. I'm going to be honest. So yeah, the NFL Madden videos are going to continue or they're going to continue the NFL Madden videos. But as far as me talking about real life NFL, I probably won't. Nah, not really. Probably not. I'm just I'm too through. I'm just it's giving me a mental headache even bringing it up. So I'm going to I'm going to end the discussion there. <laughs> if you have any if you have any strong thoughts on the NFL season, how week one went, or the Daryl Dixon spinoff, let me know because I have seen the first episode. Or if you have any thoughts about anything else, just feel free to let me know and let those uh, comments, you know, just let me know. And that's all I got for you guys for today. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and for your continued support. Or, if you're new, welcome in for the first time. All of you are very awesome, and I thank you again. And don't forget to hit the bell and switch on all notifications so you know the second I upload to YouTube. And before I forget, what are your thoughts on Gold Mythic Rick? Are you planning on pulling for him or are you going to pass on him? And do you think he's a really good tune or do you think he's a meh tune? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments. And I am Buckbeak and I'm going to go fly away back to my nest. Until next time, bye guys.